What's up everybody, my name's Annie and welcome back to Kit Guru. If I told you to think about the company called Joby, the first thing you're probably going to think of is the Gorilla Pod tripod that many vloggers use daily. If you know about camera equipment at least, that is. Today we're not looking at tripods though, we're looking at Joby's latest venture into the world of microphones, podcasts and live streaming. We're checking out their plug and play USB-C condenser microphone called the Joby Wavo Pod, coming in at £89.95. But is it any good? Let's find out. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for tech related content as it really helps to support us. For those new to content creation, getting started with audio can be difficult, especially when you start chasing great results as you'll enter the realm of audio interfaces, mixing desks, preamps, gain boosters, XLR microphones, USB microphones, dynamic or condenser capsules, and all kinds of polar pickup patterns. All of these things can add up to quite an expensive journey. However, Joby are looking to take that confusion away from you with their plug and play USB condenser microphone with two pickup patterns, an included pop filter and desk stand, all for under £100. The box is clean and professional, some nice product photos and key features listed on the back. Inside it's super simple, you get your manual, two USB cables and the microphone pre-installed onto the desk stand with pop filter attached. The box is filled with foam for protection too. We get two cables, a USB-C to USB-A cable and a USB-C to USB-C cable. Now straight away this is a win knowing that the microphone has a USB-C connection and I really like that they've included both USB-A and USB-C versions. And this is because the Wavo Pod is compatible with both Mac and Windows and most MacBooks only have USB-C. USB-C these days at least. Both cables are super long at around 3 meters in length for the USB-A and 2 meters for the USB-C cable and that may not sound great but it really is. Many USB mics have maybe 1 or 1.5 meter long cables and they're always awkward to manage, especially when attaching the microphone to a boom arm. These cables are so long that you don't need to be right next to your PC or you can easily manage that cable around a boom arm. The cables are a good thickness, not too thick thick, not too thin. It is rubber but not that horrible sticky type. It does come kinked but these mostly pull out. It's nice to see a decent length of cable as this is something easily overlooked. Now if you've seen any of my previous USB microphone reviews, you'll know that I'm not really a fan of desk stands. They're usually a bit of an afterthought, cheap, flimsy, not weighty, usually no shock mount either, and all of this can introduce noise from vibrations being carried up to the mic's capsule if it's placed on a desk. Luckily, as far as desk stands go, Joby have made not only a very sturdy one, but also a very functional, multi-purpose one. The base is a solid metal with a dense foam underneath it to stop it skidding on surfaces but also this provides some small vibration resistance too. Above the base plate we have two arms on either side attaching to the microphone and loosening the thumb screws on either sides lets you angle the microphone up or down too. If you find the perfect angle you can tighten the finger screws on either side to lock it into place. That's not all for this stand though. On either side of both arms you'll see a metal thread mounting option with the word Joby Link pointing to it. These two mounting options can be used with other Joby products to attach a phone holder or other accessories if needed, but since they're one quarter inch 20 threads, you can actually pretty much use any aftermarket attachment too. I'm a huge fan of this design. Most USB desktop stand microphones don't offer any additional accessory mounting options at all. What makes it even better is that you can unscrew the metal base stand and use the U-shape mount to then attach it to other stands or accessories as this bracket has both 3 8 inch threads or 1 quarter inch 20 threads. 
another simple but very useful and versatile addition to the design that could have otherwise been overlooked, and that's not the only mounting options either. We'll see more when we look at the microphone itself. Now this U-shaped bracket can also be totally removed. If you unscrew the thumb screws on either side, you can detach the microphone fully from the desk stand. The reason you may want to remove the desk stand entirely is to attach it to a boom arm. I always say in every one of my microphone reviews, buy a cheap boom arm if possible, as this minimizes unwanted vibrations even further, and Joby have thought of this too, as on the bottom of the microphone we get a pre-installed 5 8 inch adapter. Unscrewing that leaves you with a 3 8 inch port. Now these mounted options are for the use of boom arm attachments, but these boom arms are additional purchases. They range in price massively between cheap Amazon ones at around 10 pounds, all the way up to expensive branded ones that can cost upwards of £150, far more than the microphone itself costs. The only reason for expensive arms like mine in the background is size and rigidity. The cheap ones are often sprung and become loose over time and can't take as much weight either. Overall, in terms of desk stand and mounting options, I'm incredibly impressed that Joby have really thought about form and function here, whilst keeping it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. There are so many mounting options available here with additional threads and adapters everywhere that you look. It makes this microphone very versatile and means that you can set it up pretty much any way that you could possibly want, and honestly, I did expect nothing less from Joby. Now, let's move on to the microphone. It's a fully plastic design, but it doesn't look or feel cheap, really, in my opinion. It's a satin finish that doesn't attract fingerprints either. The design is very reminiscent of the Blue Yeti microphone, in my opinion. I'll come back to the huge red pop filter, but the colors reflect Joby's red and black theme here. On the front of the microphone, we get a dial, and now this is incrementless and just spins around forever. There's no start or stop position but it does have multiple functions. When plugged in, there is an RGB LED light ring around the dial. Long press the dial to enable headphone volume adjustment when the RGB LED is blue. Long press again to turn the light purple for microphone gain control. And short press the dial to mute or unmute the microphone with a red LED indication for it being muted. It's great to see some handy onboard controls since this is a USB microphone, but the dial isn't firmly seated in the housing. It does wobble around and it just kind of moves about as you turn it or press it. And I'm not a fan of that at all as that movement could introduce vibrations into the capsule for unwanted noise. Underneath the dial we get a button. It's not overly clicky but not too mushy either and this does have LED indicators on either side with a symbol underneath each LED. These symbols represent the polar pickup pattern that's currently selected as the microphone has two patterns. The left side is to indicate a cardioid pattern and the right side is for omnidirectional. I'll go over these in more detail later. On the base of the microphone we can see our USB-C port on the left Left, and to the right is our zero latency 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Underneath that we can see the mounting options that we spoke about earlier. Now let's address the big red pop filter. So first up, I quite like the statement Joby are making with its very obvious red design. I think it looks quite cool on camera and it's functional too. Pop filters are there to stop plosives from entering the capsule and causing audio to clip, mainly when you're quite close to the microphone. We'll test this out in our mic test later, but the pop filter is removable if you want to take it off. On the back of the microphone, you'll see another thumb screw. Now removing this lets you slide the entire pop filter housing away from the microphone, revealing the black metal capsule guard that still has those red accents around it. Removing this was easy, but I would recommend on leaving it on. With the pop filter back on and looking at the back of it again, we can see two grooves on either side, and this is to attach an additional second pop filter, but this does come at an additional cost of £8.55. Now this is for when the microphone is set up for omnidirectional polar pickup pattern use. 
Let's go over some of the specs and I'll explain the type of microphone this is along with the choices Joby have made for the capsule type and pickup pattern. This should help you decide whether this microphone is actually suited to your needs or not. The Joby Wavo Pod is a condenser microphone with a cardioid and omnidirectional polar pickup pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz and a bit depth and sample rate of 24 bit, 48 kHz. Now this is a condenser microphone, so the capsule is very sensitive with a wide frequency response. Now this means it will pick up almost all sounds from the surrounding area, as opposed to dynamic microphones that are almost the opposite it. They reject more noise and frequencies, but you need to be very close for the mics to work properly. With the Wavo Pod being a condenser microphone, if you turn the sensitivity right up, you'll hear your PC fans, keyboard noise, and you'll probably pick up cars driving outside your house, so be aware of what's happening around you. It's all about finding the sweet spot of how close the microphone is to you and how much gain you're using. It also has a cardioid pickup pattern. Now this means it will pick up everything in front of the microphone whilst aiming to minimize frequencies from behind the capsule. That's what the image near the LED in indicator displays, whereas the other pickup pattern is omnidirectional. And you can see by the image that it's just a full circle, and that's because this pickup pattern does not try to minimize frequencies behind the capsule, and instead purposefully picks up frequencies from every direction. So cardioid pickup pattern is ideal for single person use, whereas omnidirectional is ideal for capturing audio from two or more people in the same room with the use of just one microphone. With a wide frequency response, the benefit is great vocal clarity. Condenser microphones are well regarded as the best types of microphone for spoken word recordings as they pick up all the frequencies within your voice rather than cutting out some of the highs and lows like some dynamic microphones do. It's great to see two pickup patterns here as it makes the microphone more versatile if you wanted to do an off-the-cusp two-person podcast, for instance, you only just need this one microphone. However, if you were planning on setting up a regular two-person or more podcast, then I'd highly recommend buying a dynamic microphone for each person instead, but this is a more expensive option, of course. So let's see how this microphone performs. I'm not going to use a boom arm. Instead, I'm going to use the included stand to see how well it fares up against unwanted desk vibrations. I won't add any post-processing effects either. This will be straight up raw audio from the microphone. Okay, so this is the microphone test for the Joby Wavo Pod. So right now I have the gain turned down a little bit and as you can see, I'm fairly close to the microphone. So I'm probably about six inches away, maybe 20 centimeters or so, maybe a bit less. And this is what it sounds like with lower gain and a bit closer to the microphone, which is a more ideal situation because the less gain, the less amount of external noise is going to basically get fed into that capsule and the more of my voice that should be captured. So this is like an optimal situation. So if I increase the gain and sit a bit further back, like many people tend to do with condenser microphones, you'll probably hear a little bit more noise and yeah, well that should pretty much be the only thing. So let's do that now. So I'm going to keep talking and sort of move back until I'm roughly around the same sort of uh, placement. So you can probably tell now that there's more noise here. And you, yeah, I have a, a loud PC behind me, which is on. And you should also hear more sort of keyboard noise. So let's just do a keyboard test whilst I'm talking. So I'm not typing anything in particular. I'm just kind of pressing keys on my mechanical keyboard behind here. And you should hear that quite loudly, whereas if I turn the game back down and get a bit closer again, let's do the same test again. You should still be able to hear it because it is a condenser microphone, but it should be sort of less so. And this is me using the cardioid polar pickup pattern. So this is trying to avoid noise from behind. So I'm going to turn the microphone around now so that you can tell that it's not quite as clear. And then we'll move over to the omnidirectional polar pickup pattern and you should be able to hear me clearly then. So I am going to turn the, uh, the microphone gain up a little bit so I can sit a bit further back. So probably about, probably about there. 
So this is with the cardioid pickup pattern test right now. So it should be minimizing sounds from the back and just hearing from the front. So I'm going to turn the microphone around, excuse any noise. So now you shouldn't really be able to hear me that well. You will be able to hear me, but it should be a bit more muffled. Whereas right now I'm going to press the button to switch over to the omnidirectional. So this is now the omnidirectional pickup pattern, and you should be able to hear me much clearer than just a second ago when that was disabled. So you can see now that it's picking up sounds from both the front and the back. I'm only using the back as an example so that you can tell that it's capturing from both angles. And if I go back to the cardioid, and now it would probably be a little bit more muffled are probably not quite as clear. So now I just want to do a test where I basically put the, the gain really loud so that you can hear absolutely all the unwanted noise because like I said, I do have a PC on and it is going to be vibrating through the desk. So this is a test for the sort of desk stand more than anything. So I'm going to be quiet and what I'm going to do is leave the microphone on the desk and then I'm going to lift the microphone up to see if we get rid of any unwanted noise. So I will increase the gain right now. So straight away I can hear through my headphones that there was quite a bit of noise and there still is right now coming through the desk itself and me lifting that up actually cancelled that noise out so I would recommend using a boom arm if possible or buying an external shock mount and then maybe attaching it to a boom arm if possible. But that is the microphone test for the Joby Wavo Pod. So I think the Wavo Pod sounds very good. It did well at capturing all the frequencies in my voice. It's super clear and I feel like no frequencies were cut out really. Unfortunately though, as you heard, the included desk stand did not minimize the vibrations coming from my PC fans, traveling through my desk and into the Wavo Pod's microphone capsule. As soon as I lifted the microphone up off of the desk, you could hear how that low rumbling frequency dropped out entirely. This is due to the lack of a shock mount. So external or internal shock mounts suspend the microphone or capsule and absorb vibrations like these and cut them out. Luckily though, there's so many mounting options that if you attach the Wavo pod onto a boom arm, then you'll bypass this issue entirely. Now I wanted to do a quick comparison against some other microphones. In Joby's marketing material, it says the competitors are microphones such as the Rode Podcaster and the Shure SM7B, but honestly, I don't think they're competing against these at all. Both of these microphones are dynamic microphones and also XLR microphones that require mixing desks, audio interfaces, and potentially a clean gain booster for the Shure SM7B. The price range of an SM7B alone without a mixing desk or gain booster is between 300 and 400 pounds. So instead, I'm going to compare the Joby Wavo pods to what I think it's really competing against, which is other affordable USB condenser microphones. I'll compare the Wavo Pod against the Elgato Wave 3 and the NZXT Capsule. These all retail for around or just above £100, so they're within the same price bracket as the Wavo Pod. I'll play a few seconds of each, so hopefully you can hear the difference. Starting with the Elgato Wave 3 now. Here's a straight into the PC recording. No filters, effects or EQ and the gain is set on the mic to 40% as recommended by Elgato. Moving on to the NZXT capsule. Okay, so this is the microphone test for the NZXT capsule. So I am recording in OBS Studio currently and this is peaking with me talking normally at just over or around minus 10. And finally, back to the Wavo pod. So right now I have the gain turned down a little bit and as you can see, I'm fairly close to the microphone. So I'm probably about six inches away. 
It's quite a tough call listening back. I think the Wavo Pod sounds better than the Elgato Wave 3, but the NZXT capsule definitely has the edge because it has a built-in shock mount around the capsule. That built-in shock mount minimizes the vibrations going through the desk stand and into the capsule, whereas the Wavo Pod does not have any shock mount at all, and the vibrations coming through my desk were audible in comparison. However, we could potentially eradicate those vibrations by using a boom arm, and then I think the audio quality would be much closer to each other. Just like the NZXT capsule, the Joby Wavo Pod does not have any software. It's a simple, straightforward plug and play microphone. The massive benefit of the Wavo Pod over the NZXT capsule is the array of mounting options offered by Joby. The NZXT capsule only has one thread on its base versus all the options available on the Wavo Pod by Joby. The other benefit of the Wavo Pod is the dual pickup patterns. The NZXT capsule only has a single single cardioid pickup pattern. So in conclusion, do I think the Joby Wavo Pod is worth £89.95? If you want instantly good audio just by adjusting the gain level and you don't want to go down the route of mixers, interfaces, XLR microphones, etc., well then yes, I highly recommend the Joby Wavo Pod. It's incredibly easy to use, it has the most mounting options I've ever seen on a USB microphone, the inclusion of both a cardioid and omnidirectional pickup pattern is excellent for those that may want to capture audio from one or more sources. And the only thing I'd recommend is to invest in a boom arm alongside it if possible. If the lack of software options bothers you though, then I recommend checking out our review of the Elgato Wave 3 instead, as that has very in-depth software control. So what do you think of this microphone? Are you in the market for a USB condenser microphone? Let us know down in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, check out our merchandise down below, and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one.